Ladies and gentlemen, it's profile time. And, uh, oh, today, uh, one of the best players of all time. And there's not many people you can say that about. Mm. Darren Moore. <laughs> <laughs> At least you didn't say Luke Moore. <laughs> um, oh, my God. James or Jim has been banging on about this man since the start of time to get him in the, in mm-hmm. the Dean Winners Hall of Fame. Well, he's going into today. It's Johan Cruyff. I am oh. so excited about this. <laughs> <laughs> and I can Here he you- comes. He's a man beater. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Watch um, out, boys! He'll cheer you up. <laughs> Tim Lovejoy's favourite ever player, and yeah. can there be a higher accolade? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's um, not. It's spoiler. a bad <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave the final word to Tim Lovejoy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Music and chat. Everybody loved it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Owen. This is about you. one of the best players the game's ever seen. You. What, Tim Lovejoy? Hi- <laughs> <laughs> Hijackers. Um, uh, oh, dear. Oh, playmaker, goal scorer. Uh, but enough of Lovejoy. Uh, Cruyff was... <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Johan Cruyff. Um, oh, my goodness. He was born uh, on the 25th of April, 1947. 20 and a bit years before the summer of love. And it's his birthday this week. Oh, that's um, why he did. Can you believe that? Yes. Hey, he's, it's uh, everyone, perfectly feasible. Everybody has one. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, like televisions. Um, he uh, ep- <laughs> Cruyff epitomised uh, total football. Mm. Mm. Who would disagree with that? Nobody. Mm. Uh, an idiot. Exactly. Yeah, too uh, much. No. Uh, come on, <laughs> too much. He's been far too. Uh, uh, yeah, as I say, he was a playmaker, a goal scorer. He could play out wide. Just mm. it, that's the thing with Cruyff, isn't wanted. it? Because you think of him as being sort of like a midfielder, sort of like playing in the kind of Zidane style yeah. position. Yeah. But he was technically a striker. That's it's right. just it didn't really matter where you forward, put him. Really. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, he was. He was. Uh, of course, he was born in Amsterdam, quite close to the Ajax ground. His mother was a cleaner at the club, and she persuaded the coaches to um, put her son in the, their youth development system. Oh, that's ruined it for me. Yeah. <laughs> son of a sweeper, latent nepotism. Yeah, <laughs> son of a sweeper. Very good. Um, he made his Ajax debut at seventeen. Now, um, during uh, the, the sort of fifties uh, and, and early sixties, Dutch football had been quite amateur really it was in the mid 60s it was kind of becoming professional but in 1964 Renus Mikkels a very influential coach indeed. well the father of total football mm. you know, along with Jack, father, Jack, Jack Reynolds and people like that yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, he became the manager of Ajax uh, in 1964 uh, it was only about seven years later that uh, his team was the best in Europe <laughs> so um, yeah. th- it was a g- massive transformation didn't they win three European Cups in a row they did yeah it's, it's incredible yeah. yeah well by 1968 they'd won a hat-trick of Dutch championships not um, even Nottingham Forest have done that no. they only won two in a row yeah. there's a level of the achievement we're talking about <laughs> exactly and now they're in the playoffs um, uh, <laughs> Ajax uh, oh, I mean it's, it's, you know I say they produced some great players back then they've always produced great players yeah absolutely uh, but, but back then was, was, was quite something and Cruyff of course, uh, Cruyff, uh, of course was the best one um, and uh, just the, I mean as you said James the level of his ability was incredible the, the Technical skills, his speed, yeah. acceleration, dribbling skills. I mean, he had everything. Cruyff had this really weird tendency to score goals where the ball looked like it would go over, and it would probably just a creep lob. in under the under the crossbar. Yeah, yeah. Just, oh, he'd it was lift great it a for lot, a lot. didn't he? He'd lift yeah. it. You see, don't see, we always say you don't see any chips these days. He scored an amazing goal for Barcelona, which is. A, it's really famous, isn't it's it? About a six foot high back heel. Yeah, yeah. Mm. on just, the run, full pelt. It's different club. Full stretch. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah. What do you think of doing that? No, exactly. That's exactly right. Yeah. Um, the sports writer David Miller said this about Cruyff. He said, "Few have been able to exact both physically and mentally such mesmeric control on a match from one penalty area to another." He's, he's, he's the epitome of what people say about the truly great players, where the, the very top players in history. Will control the whole game. They yep. control yeah. the whole yeah. pitch. Every Absolutely. player on the opposite yeah. uh, side is aware of where they are. Mm. And Maradona was one of those, and Cruyff was absolutely one of those. Mm. The, 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 the Cruyff Town, which I'm sure you'll come on to, oh, yeah. we've got to put the video in of, of, of the most famous execution of that, where yeah. the, the, the defender almost takes his own shorts off. <laughs> he's so bad. <laughs> <vulnerable. laughs> he's sort of looking the wrong way. His body's the other way. It's yeah. like his, his blood's all been twisted yeah. up. Yeah. His head's back to front afterwards. He's never <laughs> yeah, the same so again. Cartoon, he's tied himself in an actual knot. <laughs> and Cruyff's long gone, you know. Yeah. Cru- there's nowhere to look. It's like he's disappeared. The defender actually thinks he's disappeared. <laughs> it's absolutely it's crazy. And and, and, it's, and the reason it's so good as well is because when you're, you fancy yourself as a bit of a player down the part of your mates or whatever and you mm. take on a few skills and then you pull off like 
like a reasonably competent Cruyff turn. Yeah. Almost like the Michael Jackson moonwalk. You think, oh, I quite fancy this. Yeah. And you think, oh, yeah, that's all right. And you see them do it and you think, blimey. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I'm doing an 8% Cruyff turn. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. Jan Cruyff's Cruyff turn is a thing of absolute beauty. Mm. It's a thing of genius. Well, yeah, he was a genius. It's, oh, of it, it's weird because a lot of the time you case. see, yeah, <laughs> you see, um, see footage of Cruyff and he almost. He looks like he's winging it a bit. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But then we'll just do something that's clearly so like it has been planned, sort of like four or five paces behind. Oh, it's yeah. just. He well, he, got, he famously he, said, "If if um, if I if you start your run earlier, yeah, yeah, you'll you'll get there quicker, sort of thing." <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, before I'm what did he did say? Before I make a mistake, I don't make that mistake. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think yeah. I don't. Uh, apparently, his quotes. He's got all these sort of funny quotes that they've been published in a book in Holland. You know, one of well, one of his um one of the fam- that's my book of the week. <laughs> <laughs> one of the famous quotes um about when he was manager, I think it was at Barcelona, was he would say to players, um, "If I see a player sprinting full pelt, it's because he's not left early enough." <laughs> <laughs> I like a glide. Yeah, exactly. Well, very much so. He really did glide. He's very mm. graceful at times, yeah. you know. Um, uh, but yeah, so while he was at Ajax, of course, that this um, the total football style of play was brought to the masses. As you say, it wasn't perhaps a new idea necessarily. I mean, the, the, the Hungarian side of the fifties yeah. would be and the Austrians before, as well and, before that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, but but certainly they they brought it to the masses and. and Perfected it, one might say, or, or certainly the Dutch side of the '74 World Cup perfected it really, and, and yeah. Cruyff almost sort of completed it. You know, he was mm. the. It's such a shame he didn't win the World Cup, yeah, because yeah. I mean, that would have been amazing. Absolutely. Um, uh, so yeah, I mean, the, the idea of total football. You know, the, the players play different positions. Anybody can slot in anywhere. Defenders become strikers. Strikers become defenders. Everyone's of a very similar ability. Yeah. It, it's just breathtaking, really. How and it um, makes perfect sense, by the way, as well. It makes perfect yeah. sense to train and coach someone into becoming a footballer not yeah. to, beca- it's not to be- become a left back yeah, or definitely. become become a yeah. striker become a footballer yes. and master as much as you can yeah. and, and then play your best position and you're much more flexible and absolutely yeah. right yeah. And, and as you said earlier James Cruyff was seen as kind of like the centre forward to this system yeah. See, again to me he's an attacking midfielder but mm. He's, he's, he's all things to all men mm. and all defenders yeah. Um, but yeah he would often drop deep to, to kind of confuse the, the, the centre backs and move out to the wing and blah 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 and it just everywhere you know it was, it was very difficult to mark him I'd imagine uh, yeah, and the, I agree with that <laughs> <laughs> um, he had a very questionable temperament though didn't he had <laughs> I think, I think he, he just, still comes out with some pearls. It? It's yeah, strange he for a Dutchman, but he, he, ma- he massively rates himself. Yeah. Yeah. I think in his case, but he backs it up, doesn't he? Yeah, That's exactly, the thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, well, he still pipes off now, but um, uh, yeah, he, I mean, he was suspended from the Dutch team for a year for one thing and another. And Wasn't that something really harsh? Though? It, it, he got, got sent, sent off. off. He was the first player to get sent off for Holland and was banned for a year. It's insane. <laughs> that is pissing on your own chip. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that really. He was also the first player from Holland to be voted European Footballer of the Year, which he he, he won three times, I believe. Uh, but in 1973, after winning loads of things with Ajax, he joined up with um, uh, Rinus Michels, uh, who was at Barcelona, coach of Barcelona then, for a fee which was in excess of 900 grand, which was a hell of a lot of money back then. Mm. His teammate Naiskins followed him. He was yeah. a player as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and they were at the Barcelona. And they joined Barcelona. It was kind of um, uh, well, it wasn't kind of. It was. Uh, after the season had started and Barcelona were struggling they were, they were down the table and Cruyff's impact what was, was the second <laughs> yeah, yeah, <that's> right. <laughs> Cruyff's impact was just incredible they finished as champions it, it was instant as soon as he yeah. took over yeah. woof. well that's the thing with Cruyff isn't it it's like he's a huge part of why Barcelona play in the way they do it's yeah. an extension it, of his philosophy yeah, yeah. It's the, it, and Guardiola admits it yeah. Guardiola was, the, was the, the fulcrum and the linchpin of the midfield the, the dream team that. absolutely mm. yeah. yeah totally so yeah I mean just going back to it he, they finished as champions in um, 19 I think it was 73 74 season which included a 5-0 win against uh, Real Madrid which Sounds I think familiar. was in Madrid as well Massive. Um, and that was the first time in 14 years Barcelona had won the league um, so this was in, in 1974 and of course then came the World Cup in West Germany the Dutch team were led by uh, big Johan Cruyff himself and were just on a different level to the rest of the teams in that mm. tournament they brushed teams aside I mean, the in the run up to the final I think it would have been six games and they scored 14 goals and conceded one comfortably <laughs> beat Brazil yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he's got a lovely volley in that. Game Brushed him well. aside. Well, in they're, the, knocked, they're knocked Brazil off their perch. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and in, in, the, in the World Cup final, and we all know 
and uh, they, they scored a goal without Germany touching the ball yeah. penalty, in the first minute which Naiskins put away uh, just, it's the most incredible start to a World Cup but Germany did a really really good number on them in the final I mean Bertie Vokes and one or two others really stifled them in midfield yeah. and made it very difficult for them I, I mean again you know we, we can't get sidetracked to what we're talking about but the Germans you can't you can't write them off you, you can't can. argue with them you yeah. know and if you do then you're in trouble um, but it is a shame for football in general it I, is I, I'm, not, mm. I'm not even I'm not going to be as bold as to say even some Germans would agree with me because they obviously yeah. wouldn't no. but the rest of the world yeah. that is, it's a real travesty it's, up there with Brazil 82 mm. um, well, the mighty mag yeah. is 54 uh, I agree. England 2002 uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah nobody would disagree but I mean James you, you were saying to me earlier that the Dutch they went 1-0 up and it was like they just started passing it around and they just sort of just forgot, forgot to score again yeah. basically yeah just it's incredible really yeah I mean it was such a real bitter disappointment for them um, but they ended up losing 2-1 of course mm. yeah absolutely and uh, do you know what I think it was the first time since 1938 they'd qualified for the World Cup 38-74 see the Dutch weren't a, a big footballing powerhouse well, they're not a massively populous country remember mm. no absolutely but it was until like as I say the, the, you know late 60-70s really mm. that they came onto the map and, and Cruyff and all the, the, these guys you know and Mikels and so on Absolutely huge uh, yeah. part transformed him uh, to play for that. Now, um, before the 1978 World Cup, um, he won European Football of the Year for the third time. But he kind of uh, prematurely retired, and he didn't play in 78, which was a great show for, mm. for one reason or another. Um, so he finished. There playing. are literally about ten theories as to why he didn't do it. Yeah, yeah. he himself says that um, there was a kidnap plot involving That's his family. Right. But lots know. of people, other people, say that his wife didn't want him to go because he was mm. a bit, allegedly a bit of a philanderer. Yeah. <laughs> I love that word. And then he's, I love, I love that also that Cruyff and one or two others tried to turn it into a, oh no, it's a, it's a protest, a political protest yes. against the Hunter yeah. in Argentina. I don't think I can't see that being the case. Yeah. <laughs> this is the man who used to have two stripes in his Dutch strip instead of three because mm. he got his own sponsorship deal with Puma right, instead yeah. of Adidas. You know, he's a very much a lone wolf. Yeah. Even though ironically he played in total football, which is weird. Yeah. Um, but he played 48 games for Holland and scored 33 goals which is a fantastic <laughs> record absolutely fantastic not an out and out striker yeah, yeah. you know so that's great yeah. even for an out and out striker that's great yeah you, absolutely you, you, you take that but yeah so he probably truly retired and then he changed his mind in, in 1979 and he joined the Los Angeles Aztecs in the North American Soccer League Nazzle indeed it is or was uh, he also played for the Washington Diplomats I love that yeah. that's yeah. Name. That's that's amazing. Amazing. that name I wish I played alright fair enough it was a red card <laughs> 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 yeah, um, and uh, in 1981 he went to play for Levante, who were um, obviously playing the, the Spanish. He didn't leagues. get on that well. Second though, division at the time, weren't they? I think yeah, it was an odd move. It was an odd move, but he, yeah, he was only there for a, for a brief time, and then he rejoined Ajax mm. for a second spell, where he won a couple of Dutch champions. There was the thing about that because there was a lot of talk. But he was past it, you know, because he's had a couple of odd moves at the yeah. end. I don't know if you've seen the goal he scored on his return. It's, it's just this amazing chip <laughs> yeah. after he beat about three players. Yeah, it's just yeah, like, yeah. Jesus, it's absolutely different class. Yeah, and he said there, there was another particular memorable moment was it, it I don't suppose it was on the, the same game when it was a cold December day uh, and Ajax were, were in front they got a penalty and Cruyff uh, took the ball and he put it on the spot and instead of shooting he passed the ball mm. to I think it was Jesper Olsen mm. and then he kind of dribbled towards the keeper and knocked it back to Cruyff and then he scored <laughs> obviously Henri and Perez tried this for Arsenal and, yeah, kind of and failed. somehow got it wrong <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's not that difficult but, uh, but it was just so innovative and, and, and Cruyff, said, Cruyff said about the incident he said well it was a cold day and the quality of the match was average we wanted to spice things up a bit and give people something to talk about uh, <laughs> no, that's what all about I thought, I thought when he was at Levanta they got um, relegated the season he left oh really I, don't, I, I just, I, just think, I remember think, I remember reading about it a while ago and he said, I think he only played a few times for them and scored really? a couple but th then it, just because he got annoyed he went to some of the final didn't he that's right yeah, yeah that's right yeah, he, he played got, with Hullet at the final I think I think they've, I think they've was careers a, crossed over I think slightly, so I think. I think so yeah um, yeah 1984 that was that he, the, he won the league and cup double with, with final he was pushing on by then I mean he'd have been about what 30 or not yeah he was in his 30s yeah and then uh, and then he went back to Ajax to manage the team in 1984 and uh, Danny Blint told a funny story a great centre back Danny Blint was um, t t was telling the story that uh, obviously a number of the Dutch players uh, who were playing for Ajax played for the national side including Van Basten and, mm. uh, and some of these guys and when they went to the to the national team um, set up Blint said that uh, Oh, they used to come back to Ajax and, and I think they were basically would say to Cruyff it's not as good as it is here and yeah. you know we, there's a bit of trouble in the team with certain other players and, and Cruyff said look 
you've got to be the big boys in the national team so, yeah Ajax players he said uh, and Blint said he wanted us to force our will on the rest of the players and if there was a player in the team that didn't want to play um, play ball with us we needed to force him out of the team by ignoring him or giving him hospital balls uh, <laughs> and all this kind of stuff <laughs> for the greater good yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, that's Cruyff was saying My God. To, to his players be disruptive in the <laughs> national team <laughs> and, the, and, and I mean that, you know and we wonder why Holland have always got problems you Jesus. know this kind of thing <laughs> that's great absolutely funny absolutely. that's why John Terry did that <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, and, and under uh, Cruyff uh, Ajax won the, the Cup Winners Cup in, in, in 1987 now uh, funnily enough after some disagreements he left uh, in, in 88 to, to go and replace Terry Venables at Barcelona mm. and they uh, won the Cup Winners Cup and, and as we said earlier, you know, he just revolutionised the side mm. with sort of free flowing attacking style, and Pep Guardiola was a huge part of that team. And they won the the, the team became known as the Dream Team. Yeah, mm. that's an incredible player, isn't it? Stoichkov and Romario together yeah. <laughs> up front. Bacero, Guardiola, Kuman. Yeah, Ron Kuman. Yeah, they won the, was there. I think quite possibly. Um, they they won the ninety two European Cup at Wembley. Yeah, yeah, um, and his influence is still there, as you, as you said. That attacking possession well, it's style, the four-three-three thing as well, isn't it? You, well, you can't what, change that at Barcelona. It's sacrilege. You, you I think, can't be it, a manager. Cruyff had something to do with that originally. Down memory influence. lane, but they're not beat Sampdoria in that final. They did, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think Viali was playing for Sampdoria, but yeah, you can't go turn up to Barcelona as a manager and go, "Well, I think we're going to play four-four-two this season." <laughs> yeah. No, that's not what we do here. <laughs> no, all right, Mike Bassett, <laughs> we're doing four-three-three. <laughs> Get on with it. One of the things that um, Sandra Rossell, the current president of Barcelona, Dave Bassett, which yeah. <laughs> which, did, um, which, which wasn't that popular was he rescinded Cruyff's life presidency didn't he yes he did and Cruyff got annoyed about that didn't Cruyff say I don't want to be a clown in your circus anyway or something is that right <laughs> yeah 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 dear oh dear well yeah he, he was incredibly successful at Barcelona I think they won 11 trophies in 8 seasons and won 4 uh, Spanish championships and as I say the European Cup and all sorts but unfortunately by the mid 90s um, the, the, the things started to go a little bit wrong they were knocked out the Spanish Cup by um, Betis who were a second division side at the time and, and, and that was followed by uh, a home defeat by Atletico Madrid and, and that was the first time in, in something like six seasons that they'd, they'd lost two successive games at the new Camp Sack him um, yeah well he was there for a couple more years but in 96 he also had a heart attack I think as yeah, well right. and, and he'd we had to stop smoking he substituted cigarettes for a lollipop for didn't a he? lollipop yeah, yeah. I, I can remember seeing, yeah. seeing that yeah absolutely uh, and, and 96 that he was he was sacked sadly um, and Bobby Robson um, took over but um, just when, when God shuts the door he opens a window eh? <laughs> <laughs> it's weird to think that Cruyff that incredible time at Barcelona which as we say the, we still see the effects very much so of now was was um, in between two Englishmen yeah, yeah. The Venables the and then Robson great it, yeah. it really is it really is odd he did say about the English game he said the great strength of the English game which worries all foreigners is its pace the quick movement of the ball but midfield carries the balance of every match so long as English teams allow themselves to be outnumbered in midfield they will not exploit their advantages it's exactly what Gary Neville said about the national team yeah saying that you need three in the midfield at international mm. level yeah well, yeah, a lot of people have said it I mean he was a real know-all as well Croy yeah. oh, uh, I mean he knows yeah. he, he's correct he yeah. was the know-all yeah appa- apparently when he was in, Mer- in America when he was playing out there he uh, he bowled up to one of the famous American football coaches really well renowned and started to lecture him on the tactical aspects of American football <laughs> 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 which was absolutely superb um, I mean since uh, not managing um, Barcelona since he left there he uh, has gone on to do a number of business ven- uh, ventures uh, he's got his Cruyff Classics the, the trainers yeah uh, he um, <laughs> he was manager I mean you say manager they only play once in a blue moon of Catalonia the, of Catalonia yeah. that's yeah. right yeah uh, and he was <coughs> kind of uh, he's always in and around Ajax oh, I bet he a, takes that really seriously though, yeah. <laughs> I bet he's like David Brent at Ajax <laughs> I bet he's in there all the time playing with the printers and stuff <laughs> I'm not going to phone ahead <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, in 2007 Ajax decided to retire the number 14 shirt in, oh, in his honour big shout mm. there's an annoyed substitute I tell you um, mm. and in, in 99 uh, he was chosen as the best player of the century for, for Europe Oh, we've got to get a couple of videos up on round with you. What yeah. a player. What a player. What a player indeed. And, and uh, we'll, we'll leave the final quote to him, otherwise he wouldn't be happy. He said, um, with regards to his playing career, he said, we showed the world you could enjoy being a footballer. You could have a laugh and have a fantastic time. I represent the era which proved that attractive football was enjoyable and successful. <laughs> and I'm not going to argue with that. Here he comes. Ladies and gentlemen, Johan Cruyff. And not before time. Mm. <laughs>